Did Nintendo win the console wars? First of all, let's talk about how Nintendo focuses on releasing more exclusives. I feel like over the this past generation of consoles, um, the PS5, the Xbox Series X, and the Nintendo Switch, I feel like Nintendo has released more exclusives for their platform compared to the PS5 and the Xbox. While the PS5 does release release exclusives, I also know that they tend to port their exclusives over to the PC, thus making the, the exclusives no longer exclusive. Whereas Nintendo games, you need a Nintendo console in order to play them. So I feel like they win a point in that um, in that topic. And due to the lack of power that the Nintendo Switch has, I feel like developers have to focus more on the gameplay of the games that they are making rather than focusing on graphics. Also, artists can focus on the game's art style and creating something that we've never seen before. And although I do believe there's a market out there for realistic graphics and realistic mechanics, I also believe that we do need more games that are just focused on delivering a fun gameplay experience. And I feel like Nintendo does do that. And just to clarify real quick, um, for most of my life, I did just rock with the PlayStation. Uh, my first console was the PlayStation 2. And I, ever since then, I've had, you know, every release after that. Um, and it's only until recently that I picked up a Nintendo Switch. And of course, I had a Nintendo Wii. I mean, who, who hasn't had one of those, right? But yeah, so <laughs> just so you guys know that I'm not over here fanboying over Nintendo. I'm just stating what I've seen from this past generation. But moving on to the next point. I feel like Nintendo has released funner games, in my opinion. Um, I found myself just beating more games on my Nintendo Switch, just because I've had a funner time playing their games over other console exclusives that have released on the Xbox or the PlayStation. And I think this is just because I can't really describe it, but maybe just due to me just having nostalgia for more simpler games and games that don't require me to always just give my full attention. And I don't know if that's because our attention spans are just really bad nowadays. But yeah, I just found myself to be having a funner time with Nintendo games. And of course, there's games on the PlayStation that I, you know, enjoy playing and come back to every now and then. And for the next point, I'm going to talk about how I believe Nintendo has more innovation, has had more innovation over the years. I mean, just by looking at their consoles, I feel like they've always released something new on their their hardware. Whether even if, if it's just a gimmick that really serves no purpose, it's still cool to see some innovation in a console. And I mean, just looking at the Nintendo Switch, we see that you can either play it as a normal console or you can take it on the go, which I think is a great feature and <laughs> it's not just a gimmick, right? And just to have that freedom of being able to take the Nintendo Switch wherever you want is really nice. Because like I said in the, the previous point, I have found myself beating more games on the Nintendo Switch. And I think that's just because I'm able to bring the Switch to more places. Whereas with my PlayStation, <laughs> if I have to go somewhere or, you know, have an appointment or something, I can't just bring my console, right? But with the Nintendo Switch, I can just bring it wherever I want. So that's nice. <laughs> and I don't know why it sounds like <laughs> I'm advertising for Nintendo right now when I'm not, but <laughs> whatever. And moving on, uh, I feel like the Switch just has a more reasonable price for the actual you know console i think right now on amazon you can find a switch for like you know 
250 to 300 and then an OLED maybe like 300 or 350 and <laughs> if you just think about that and compare it to the recently announced price of the uh, PS5 Pro kind of crazy how you can just buy a switch for basically half price or you know even less than that and possibly have a better experience playing games that are just more enjoyable and this next point i'm bringing up is i guess not really that big but it's kind of cool for me i think the that nintendo has a better couch co-op uh, experience and that's also like i said due to you you just being able to bring the console wherever um you can bring it to a restaurant if you want and just play with a sibling or friend while you're while you're waiting for your food and even if you just plug into the tv i feel like there's just more games that have a couch co-op experience whether that's mario kart mario party um super smash bros couch co-op is not something i feel like everybody enjoys but it's just a nice feature to have when you're having guests over or you know you can invite to a friend's house and you guys can just play some games um together that doesn't require require you guys to always be online and just to go over some points where i think that has caused nintendo to falter over this generation is um first of all the the prices for their games rarely drop and if you're looking for a nintendo exclusive trying to buy one at a retail store or on like on an online retailer like amazon or even the nintendo at the nintendo shop you'll usually find that their games are still at full price even if they've been released for i don't know seven seven years whereas i think xbox and um, playstation if you go on their stores you can't find exclusives that do have price drops um and i think the nintendo shop i i know it does have their, their that their exclusives do drop in prices um, on some sales but i rarely see it uh, so if you are looking for one of their exclusives you should probably try to buy it um, from a third party uh, just selling it for maybe 20 30 dollars maybe 40. and then this next point is something i think um both playstation and i think xbox can relate to i don't know much about the xbox controllers um, but yeah, uh, controller drift is something that has occurred in the Joy-Cons for the Switch. And if you have a Switch or a PlayStation 5, you would know that controller drift is one of the worst things that have come from this generation. And even in the previous generation, like the PS4. Uh, yeah, controller drift is just one of those things where it has... <laughs> really in my opinion has really impacted how bad um the gaming industry has been because it's like you're selling these expensive controllers but then you can't fix this one problem i'm pretty sure we all know they don't fix it because then that would just lead to people buying more controllers and that makes them more money so that's why i'm pretty sure that's why they don't fix it um so yeah this is not really a specific a flaw for Nintendo, but I just thought I'd bring it up. And then, of course, the last point is that the Nintendo doesn't really release the most powerful uh, console between the three. And like I said, they just focus more on uh, making fun games that are more optimized for the platform that they uh, develop. So yeah, the Switch, it's, you know, a pretty weak console. I don't even think it can output 1080 and the frames are pretty atrocious <laughs> for certain games but if you're playing a nintendo exclusive that's optimized for the switch you'll have a good time i feel like um, if you're playing a third party game uh, it's kind of hit hit or miss um but i guess that's why you have well that, at least that's why i have the switch and the ps5 so i can play more powerful games on that 
But yeah, those are pretty much my uh, talking points for, you know, making an argument for why the Nintendo, well, for why Nintendo uh, might have won the console wars for this generation. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty crazy because they've been in, in this industry for for, deca- for decades now. And yeah, I feel like <laughs> this is kind of Nintendo's generation, to be honest. And with the recent announcement of the PS5 Pro and Xbox doing, um, I don't know what they're doing right now. <laughs> uh, and then the Nintendo Switch um, 2 is probably coming out next year. So depending on how Nintendo releases that and how good that console ends up being, they can probably reach a good market of gamers who are tired of PlayStation and Xbox. So yeah, that's pretty much it.